Time now for some sports news. Well, Nigeria will again enter the history books tomorrow, a Sunday, November the 8th, as only the second country to retain at the FIFA Under-17 World Cup, should they beat fellow Africans Mali in the final. Brazil were the first team to successfully defend this trophy. They won in 1997 and then retained it in 1999. The Golden Eagles have already won the competition a record four times, but they will go a step further if they successfully defend the trophy they won two years ago in Abu Dhabi. Three weeks ago, 24 teams from six confederations arrived in Chile to contest the FIFA Under-17 World Cup. Fifty-two matches later, it has been confirmed that an African side between Nigeria and Mali will definitely lift the trophy. The two teams will go toe-to-toe -to -toe in the final for the first time in 22 years and 10 editions of the tournament after Ghana and Nigeria met in the final back in 1993. While Nigeria have booked their place in the final for the eighth time in 11 attempts, Mali's teenagers are the first team at any age group from their country to reach a FIFA final. Sunday night's game provides the world an opportunity to see the best of African football and a thrilling clash between current world champions Nigeria and current African champions Mali. Meanwhile, President Mohamedou Buhari put smiles on the faces of the Golden Egg Lids uh, uh, players with a conversation with them and officials uh, this evening. Or oh, the president, who was the then military head of state some 30 years ago when Nigeria won the inaugural edition in China and actually gave the team uh, known as the Golden Egg Lids, tasked the players to make the country proud. The president wants the lads to know that Nigerians are fully behind them while hoping that they will bring the trophy home again. Golden Eagles head coach Emmanuel Amanike and captain Galician Wakali assured the president that the entire team is ready for the final against their West African rivals and promised to give everything needed to win the cup. On address, Falkner's coach Peter Dedewa wants to approach the second leg qualifier match against the Bazit Sana of South Africa like a World Cup final in Johannesburg on Sunday. That's tomorrow. Coach Dedewa says that the girls will be fully focused on winning the match to secure the ticket for the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup in Papua New Guinea next year. The African qualifying round fixture between both countries is delicately poised after the Falkners won the first leg 2-1 in Abuja. Nigeria have qualified for the tournament since its inception, finishing as runner-up in 2010 and in 2014. And that's a wrap in sports news. So Lyman will be back with the rest of the news at 10. It is indeed. It, it calls for a massive celebration. Jubilant Sierra Leoneans rolled out the drum as they celebrate the victory over the deadly Ebola virus after 42 days with no new cases. In the capital, Freetown, residents held a candlelight vigil to mark the end of the Ebola epidemic that has killed almost 4,000 people, including more than 220 health workers since it began last year. Thousands of people gathered overnight in Freetown to pay tribute to health workers who lost their lives. It counts down. As the country says, we are free again. After 60 years, the leaders of China and Taiwan have now held historic talks in Singapore. Chinese President Jinping and Taiwan's President Ma shook hands at the start of the talks. China views Taiwan as a breakaway province which will one day be reunited with the mainland. But many Taiwanese see it as independent and are concerned at China's growing influence. The meeting took place in neutral territory on the sidelines of a state visit by Mr. Jinping to Singapore. And the main news again. The Taraba State Election Petition Tribunal sitting in Abuja today nullified the election of Darius Ishaku as governor. In his ruling, chairman of the tribunal, Justice Musa Danladi, held that Governor Ishaku was not properly nominated as a candidate of the People's Democratic Party for the governorship election. Governor Darius Ishaku, however, condemned the tribunal ruling nullifying his election and vowed to appeal the judgment. 
Tragedy struck today in Lagos as the family lost four children to a mudslide. And leaders of China and Taiwan have started holding historic talks in Singapore as they meet for the first time in more than 60 years. That's it on the news at 10. Many thanks for watching.